Brian, if you're in the parking lot and you can hear us, honk your horn. Awesome, thank you. wins <laughs> but we're well balanced welcome to Salem United Methodist Church does anybody remember besides me and I'm not the oldest one here so help me out maybe I am uh, a daily TV show came on in the afternoons every day and it started out Hey kids, what time is it? It's Howdy Doody time! <laughs> Clarabelle, remember? The, the peanut gallery? I don't remember, that was before my time. Yeah, well, I mean. <laughs> And what was the, the head guy, Bob? Bob? Cowboy Bob? No. Cowboy Bob was an Indiana guy. WTTV. Something Bob, though, right? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad somebody, did you know that Clarabelle never said a word, had the horn, until the very last show. At the end of the show, they do a close-up of Clarabelle. Clarabelle says, bye. That's the only word Clarabelle spoke in all the years. So, so when Salem, we a little different when we say, hey. What time is it? It's... Howdy doody time. No. <laughs> Howdy doody time. Community time. <laughs> See how I worked that in? Pretty good, huh? That's good. I thought you were going to say they got married and you should talk a lot. <laughs> He's got more jokes back here than you. <laughs> Community time is a time that we take to uh, share uh, announcements and concerns and praises. Uh, I want to point out a few people that are here today. There's a couple in the very back row, if they'd hold up their hands, uh, and they left their kids at home today. Glad, glad you're back, okay. Uh, Tyler, raise your hand. Tyler is a visitor with us today. He's from Zionsville. He's been here several years ago, but he's been around. Uh, also, John Holmes and Mary, they have their grandson back with them today. Uh, Cole, welcome back. Cole has played the violin for us before, remember? Okay. And we, we'd like for him to do that again. 
And uh, Myra and Janice, hold up your hands. We'll see you. Myra played guitar here several times with her partner, John. Do you remember that? John and her played country music, and they played for years at the state fair. So she's, uh, John's not doing real well, so uh, let's keep John in our prayers if we could, okay? Uh, let's take a quick look at the bulletin. Uh, we have prayers listed for uh, the Arnold family, and Deb Shook, like I've said a couple times, is really in need of our prayers. May I interrupt? Sure. It, people in the annex, are you hearing better this morning? Can you hear the, the microphone? The Yes. Okay. Somehow or another, we turned the speaker knob all the way down. So those two speakers have been off for the last six months. So, so maybe today you'll hear better. Thank you. Uh, Deb has uh, been in the hospital a couple of days this week. She's back home now, but uh, she's going to stay there today and try to get stronger. So let's, let's keep uh, Deb uh, foremost on our prayers. Two of them that's not listed, uh, Bob's niece, uh, Myra, is in the hospital uh, with some infection issues. So Myra, keep you in our prayers. And uh, Paula has a friend, Delilah. And Delilah has been diagnosed with uh, stage three cancer and is doing some treatment. So uh, Paula will keep Delilah in our prayers. Also, two young seniors from Hamilton Heights last night going to a prom had a fatal accident. So we lost two of our best. And there was another couple in the back seat. Uh, they were injured, but they're in the hospital. Uh, I think they described it as non-life-threatening injuries. But let's just bow our heads in silence for just a minute for Hamilton Heights kids. Thank you. Um, other is in the bulletins is another thank you for the uh, transitional worship team that we honored last week. And on the uh, schedule of events, uh, May is our uh, meeting month. We have a UMW meeting on the 11th, trustees on the 11th, and on the 17th is our board meeting. And the Habitat Faith Building uh, is on the 15th. And if you have any questions about that, you can see, uh, see Eric. Um, I'm going to come out and ask you. Anybody have anything? You can hold up your hand. Uh, okay. Is the mic on? Okay. While, while Larry's going, I'm going to say today I wore jeans to church. This might be the first time I've ever worn jeans to church. And uh, Chalmer, if you're in the parking lot, I did it for you this morning. So I miss Chalmer in here. And uh, I will turn that on. <laughs> there. I was going to wear a t-shirt with a slogan on it uh, for Gina, but I chickened out. So. <laughs> Who? Who's first? I have one. Um, we would appreciate everyone's prayers for um, Richie's mom is going to have a hip replacement this week. So um, his dad is doing well with his knee replacement recovery, but now it's uh, his mom's turn. And um, my mom could use your prayers with uh, some peace of mind as she prepares for her knee replacement that is actually on the calendar. So um, later this month, so if you could pray for, for her nerves and uh, Grandma Donna's successful procedure and recovery and um, all of the medical professionals and family members that will be taking care of everyone. Good luck, Bobby. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> A little more update on the Habitat uh, Faith Build. You've probably seen this flyer and some uh, colorful plastic cups out in the, in the lobby there. Uh, we're at the start of another month, so those that missed out on April or didn't want to start in the middle of the month, 
You've got another opportunity. This is a, oh, it's kind of a cute or clever little thing on a daily basis. So something to bring to mind that uh, you can be thankful for that you might have and extend uh, some change, uh, pocket change or whatever each day based on those suggested things as a way of funding part of the uh, Habitat Faith Build. Now a couple other dates to put on your calendar and then let me know if you're available and interested. Uh, June the 25th on a Friday, we'll be working with the Christian Church group on site at the Faith Build. I don't know what we're going to be doing as far as, you know, what, what carpenter skills or what work needs to be done on that particular date, but uh, we're pairing up with them and we'll field a, a, a work crew as well. So if you're available on Friday the 25th, uh, just let me know. And, uh, and then also Saturday the 26th. So I'll probably be crew leader on the 25th. I'll be looking for a crew leader uh, for the Saturday the 26th. So if you're available, I'd be glad to have you. And again, we won't be doing it alone. We'll be partnering with the Christian Church crew. So please add that to your calendar. Grab your calendar on the way out. Uh, and uh, glad to have any and all participate. Those, those can be turned in any time. If you, if you did it for a month April and want to turn it in, I'll take them any time uh, or throughout May. I think the build won't be completed until sometime in July. So, um, I don't know if most people, some of you people remember Dan Botwell, a real good friend of mine. He's been to church a couple times. Um, the Gillian, he had the, the police officer wife son had that Gillian Barr syndrome. Well, it's come back, and, but it's not, it's a mild case of it. And also, he's having problems with sugar. He's been being a diabetic all of his life. So we never had any prayers for him. He's been in the hospital about a week, and he's not doing real great, but he's doing okay. But we just need to give a prayers for him. Okay, anybody else? Annex, anybody? Okay. Mr. Starkey. You come see me up here. Yeah. Somebody, a bunch of people wanted, wanted me to, or wanted somebody to frame the old top of the old directory. And so I did. And here it is. Thank you. It, uh, the frame is made out of the old door off the directory. You can see some of the screw holes in it. So I don't know where they're going to hang it at yet, as long as they don't hang it in the furnace room or the storage shed. <laughs> That's all I mean. <laughs> Thank you. Since this is the uh, first Sunday of the month, we'll have communion today. And also next Sunday, you all come because it's Mother's Day celebration. And you know how, I'm, how we uh, look forward to that every year. Birthdays. May 2nd, Governor Eric Holcomb. They haven't been here lately. Probably a little busy, okay. On the 3rd, Leah Grace Overman. She had a party yesterday in uh, Cleveland, and I know some people that drove up there. On the 3rd also is Kelly Yeedy uh, Barbado. On the 3rd, Suzanne Ho. On the 4th, Rachel Hazelwinkle. The 5th, we have Brandon Davis and Micah Faulkner. On the 7th, Charlie Noble. If you got his new address, you ought to send him a card oh, so he'll know we didn't forget him. And on the 8th is uh, Audrey Lamar. Uh, this coming week, we didn't have any anniversaries. St starting in the very near future, be it next Sunday or shortly after, with your permission, thank you, we're going to have the birthday people come down like we used to, if they're comfortable with it. Stay masked. And uh, 
I don't know if we're going to pass the uh, church for a donation or not, or the pencils, we'll see, but slowly, I think we need to get back to the normality, and that's one way of doing it, okay? Uh, we didn't have anybody today that uh, that was going to be present, but the next uh, next week, there, uh, there's a chance there'll be somebody here, okay? Um, I think that's it. How many girls, how many kids we got here today? Hold up your hand. One, two, okay. Another way to get back to normality. We have the kids come down for this is the day. Come on down, even if you're close to being a kid. Like Luke, Carissa. <laughs> I'm close enough. <laughs> Look at this. Isn't that good? You can spread out a little bit if you feel comfortable, but family, you can stay together. How's that? You know the words? Mostly. Okay. <laughs> I'm not too distracting when I'm walking around taking some pictures with a tablet or doing some video uh, we put a, a videotape together and we do it on YouTube and people have said they really like seeing all your faces <laughs> so that camera's pointed this way and they don't get to see you so I'm trying to take some on the tablet and edit it in it takes a little more time but I think it's really worth it if I'm distracting let me know and I'll figure out a way to do something different so thank you very much Good morning. Would everyone please rise and join me in the call to worship? Christ the Lord is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Jesus is the real vine, and we are the branches to bear good fruit. Unless we stay connected to the vine, we will wither and dry up. Come, let us worship God, the gardener who cares for the vine and the branches. Our hymn of adoration is Break Thou the Bread of Life on page 599. <laughs>
you will now turn to page 881 and join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. This morning our scripture lesson, our first scripture lesson is Mark 14 verses 17, or excuse me, is John 15 verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more plentiful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain on the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This ends the reading of John 15, verses 1 through 8. Friends, we've come to our prayer time this morning, and I would invite you now just to sit back, relax, and simply take in a few deep breaths as we breathe in the goodness of God and go to God with our silent prayers. Good morning, God. Loving God, we give thanks for the beauty of the flowers and the fresh green leaves. We thank you for being with the families of the FedEx victims. We thank you for being with the families of the children at Hamilton Heights. This morning we pray for the Sikh community as they mourn the losses and laid the, their victims to rest yesterday. Continue to walk with them as they try to figure out the new normal for their families. Give us the courage to protect and care for others even when we're afraid. Give us the grace to love as you love. Guide us along our paths. Awaken our curiosity and empathy. Forgive us when our love is absent and show us how to offer our love with more than just words. May our love overflow and expand to your people. We know that you love and forgive us even when we love or fail to love. 
God, today we've offered names and prayer for healing, restoration, and hope. Some of these names have been spoken aloud, while others remain in our hearts and our minds. Yet you're, you hear each of our cries. You've heard all the prayers we've offered today. Be with us now in this time and place. And over this next week, help us to use the example that we have of Jesus as we go about our daily lives. And it's the same Jesus who taught us to pray this Lord's Prayer by praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for us. Amen. Friends, we come to a time of offering our, ourselves and our gifts to God. Uh, there is a basket or a box back in the vestibule this morning. You can leave your gifts there. And if you're in a parking lot, you can always give through the website or mail a check to the church. Let's now stand and continue in a time of worship.
was rubbing on the microphone, sorry. Good morning, it's children's time. <laughs> okay, oh. it's nice to see a few more children with us this morning. Um, I've got some kids on this side. Do, would Haven or Ruth, either one, like to move a little closer? You could sit on this side step or here in the front. If you don't want to, it's all right, but like Mr. Randall said, we're trying to get back to what would be more normal? And so we usually have you kids come down front, but do what's comfortable for you for now, okay? And I've got three kids right here. <laughs> Good morning, Hitsky family. Okay, I brought some things from home today. I've got this beautiful basket of apples, and I've got this branch with me. Here we go, we'll set those right there. Okay, now, don't they look yummy? Does everybody like apples? Yeah, okay. So, um, sorry. <laughs> These did come from my home. I have an apple tree in my yard. And Mr. Overman helped me this morning and cut these from the tree. And I think you can see from back there, see? I've got leaves and bark and right here, see all these little fuzzy things? That's what's left of the blossoms. It's gonna be full of apples, isn't it? Yeah, I can bring this in the kitchen and just pluck one right off, right? <laughs> no, you don't think it'll work quite that way? Hmm, okay, well, you're right, it won't work that way. Um, I want to talk, did you know that the Bible calls us branches? Are we branches? Nick, what kind of branch do you want to be? A big one. A big one. <laughs> all right, all right, he wants to be a big one. Um, Jesus tells us that he is the vine and we are the branches. If we stay close to Jesus, we will bear much fruit. Mr. Overman read from John 15 this morning. Verse 5 says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If a person remains in me and I remain in him, then he produces much fruit. But without me, he can do nothing. Hmm. What do you think that means? If we love Jesus, Nick said he wanted to be a big branch, you can grow some big apples, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, am I gonna grow a pear out of my ear? What about a peach? Ooh, peaches are good. Yeah, I can grab one of those out of the other ear, right? 
that's really not what it means, is it? No, no, I don't think so. But what could Jesus have been trying to tell us? What kind of fruit does he want us to bear? There's another place in the Bible, Galatians 5, 22 and 23. It tells us about something called the fruit of the Spirit. Who's heard of that before? Oh, come on. Your memory can't be that short. Okay. It isn't the kind of fruit we eat, is it? No, no. What are, what are some of the kinds of fruits of the Spirit? Anybody remember? Oh, come on. There's an easy, obvious one. What? Peace and patience. Those are good. Okay. Peace and patience. Yes. So one of these apples is peace. One is patience. What about joy? What? Self-control. That's another good one. Wait, see, I've got plenty of apples in that basket. Got any others? Love. Kindness. Love. Woohoo! Gentleness. Faithfulness. Goodness. Those are the kind of fruits that Jesus is talking about. That's what he wants us to bear, that kind of fruit. And if you cut this branch away from Jesus, and you don't have him in your life, you're not rooted in Jesus, is it harder for you to bear fruit? Yes, Haven is shaking her head yes. Of course it is. It is harder. So, to have a good, healthy crop, we need to stay connected to Jesus and not cut off the branch like Mrs. Overman did this morning because this is going to wither and die and it won't produce any fruit. And if you wander too far away from Jesus, you're not going to be healthy and whole and produce the kind of fruit that he wants us to, to spread God's love. Okay, so that's, I want you to have a good crop, a good harvest, and bring others to the Lord. All right? Okay, so let's say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you so. We want to be good fruit. We want to have the qualities that you have. Help us to, to grow and blossom and share that fruit with the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for your attention. Our scripture reading now is from Mark 14, verses 17 through 25. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table, eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips his bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be, far, it would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the day when I, grew, when I drink it in a new kingdom of God. This ends the reading of Mark 14, verses 17 through 25. There's some uh, minor debates between churches about how we take communion. It goes so far as to talk about what kind of bread we use. My personal favorite is King's Hawaiian bread. Nice, sweet, tastes good. But whether we use grape juice or not, or 
fermented wine. I prefer grape juice. But the big debate through the centuries is how we understand Christ's presence in that bread and cup. When Jesus distributed the bread to his disciples, he said, this is my body broken for you. And then with the cup, he added, this is my blood poured out for you. And so there are Christian traditions which emphasize the verb. The bread and wine are not mere representations, but they are his blood and body freely shared. Some of you may have grown up Catholic and you learn of the doctrine of transubstantiation. Transubstantiation, something like that. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. I could say it yesterday, but today I, it's gone. It's that idea at the moment of consecration and consumption that there is a literal transformation that happens. Protestants in general and Methodists in particular don't hold that doctrine. But there is a sense uh, that these things do more than just represent Christ, like maybe a picture of Jesus or even a cross. We affirm that Christ is present in communion in a way that he isn't present anywhere else. The chief mode by which communion works is through memory. Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. The cup and the bread are designed to quicken the memory, to remind us of something or someone we are apt to forget. Now, a few weeks ago, I, I mentioned food triggers and how they help spark memories. It's like that cake your grandma always made. There's certain things that I make that remind me of the fond memories of my grandparents. Maybe I'm making one of her famous cakes and the house smells a certain way. And I think of grandma or the taste of her recipe of um, lemon icebox pie, or which is lemon meringue pie. Just the taste of that reminds me of grandma. In Isaiah 25 verses six through eight, the prophet tells us we are invited and describes God's plan. The message translation of the uh, scripture is this. But here on this mountain, God of the angel armies will throw a feast for all the people of the world. A feast of the finest foods, a feast with vintage wines, a feast of seven courses, a feast lavish with gourmet desserts. Sounds like a pretty good deal. And here on this mountain, God will banish the pall of doom hanging over all peoples, the shadow of doom darkening all nations. Yes, He'll banish death forever, and God will wipe away the tears from every face. He will remove every sign of disgrace from his people wherever they are. Yes, God says so. Now, food is rarely described at length in the scriptures. In fact, in the prophetic books, uh, descriptions of food and banquets often accompany uh, criticism for self-indulgence. Even in the chapters before this one, Isaiah says the wine had all dried up along with the joy and delight. But here, food, drink, and delight return on God's terms. God gathers us in a spirit of joy and celebration and harmony to remind us that God is planning not only to host a heavenly banquet for all, but to also banish all doom, to wipe away every tear, to shackle shame forever, and claim us forever his own. Let the sacramental meal 
be our reminder. Now, Rachel Held Evans once said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A bunch of outcasts and oddballs gathered at a table, not because they're rich or worthy or good, but because they're hungry. They're hungry and they said yes. And there's always room for more. I think Rachel was right. There's always room for more at the table. It doesn't matter where you've been or where you've, uh, what you've done. God uses Jesus to reach out. He reaches out to people on the fringe, the sick, the outcast, people that really had nothing as well as common people, common people like you and me. God loves every one of us, no matter what. And God wants us to come to the table for a meal. There was once a popular camp song uh, by Audio Adrenaline called Big House. And it talks about how big God's house is. He also has a big, big table with lots and lots of food. The song is a good reminder of uh, that there's plenty of room for everyone at God's table. There's plenty of love and mercy for all. After all, God loved us so much, he sent his only son to be the final sacrifice for all of our sins now and forever. It's a love like this that makes it so hard to get our heads around. Now, since the onset of COVID-19, we've had to change the way we do communion. I remember given, being given one of these little cups at a conference. I remember thinking, wow, that's really impersonal. The part I like the most is, is holding my hand is out and having somebody put that piece of bread into my hand with the words, body of Christ broken for you. To me, that's, that's powerful. It's powerful to receive that bread and cup. It's powerful as the pastor to be able to serve you as you come forward. And I miss those days. During Holy Week here at Salem, we served communion with bread and cup on Monday, Thursday. Now we took plenty of precautions to make sure that everybody stayed safe. And several of you told me how much you missed coming to the table and how special that was. I'm looking forward to the day when we're able to come forward again and receive the elements. Now the main takeaway from this meal is Christ's presence in this meal. But Christ can be known. Christ can be felt. Christ can be experienced. Christ can be remembered in different ways through communion. Now one last thing. There are four verbs that we use when we bless the bread and cup. There are four movements uh, in the communion liturgy. Christ takes, Christ blesses, Christ breaks or sheds, and Christ gives. So remember that the life of Christ was taken and blessed, broken and distributed for the salvation of us all. But here's the kicker. When we come to the altar to, to receive the meal, we bring ourselves and ask God what to do with us. What? What will God do? To make something of our lives broken and marred by sin. And so God takes receiving and blessing us. But then, once 
Christ is in us. We are broken and given. Sent forth to be living sacrifices of love and service and witness to God's great mercy and grace. So now we come to communion this morning. And if you'd like to follow along, uh, it's on page 12 of your hymnal. And this is uh, a time for everyone. The United Methodist Church has an open table, which means anyone can come forward and take communion uh, as long as they have a willing heart. Now, some of us may not be ready to take communion today, and that's okay. I invite you just to, to stay in your seat and en enjoy the music as people come forward to gather the elements. We'll be coming forward this morning to get the elements. You'll be getting one of these uh, cups, if you haven't already gotten one, and you'll be able to come forward down the center aisle and go back to your seats on the side wings. So let's start now on page 12 with the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbor. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll continue now with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let's pray. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recover the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave, him us, gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks to God. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. 
By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. I know we'd invite you just uh, to come forward as you're ready. Uh, remember, if you're not ready to take communion, just stay in your seat. Nobody's going to look at you funny. This is just your time uh, to enjoy with God. And we will come out to you if you can't come forward. Body and blood of Christ. Body and blood of Christ poured over you. Body and blood of Christ for you. Body and blood of Christ for you. Body and blood of Christ. Body and blood of Christ. Body and blood of Christ. <laughs> Body and blood of Christ. I would invite you now to stand as you're able as we continue our time of worship with the singing of our closing song. So 
such friendship better known, we see and praise Him here. We see and praise Him here. Together met, together bound, we'll go our different ways. And as His people in the world, we'll live and speak. Now, friends, as you go from this place, leave here your cares, your worries, and your troubles. You can't keep carrying all that around. And in their place, take with you faith, hope, and love, for these three things are already yours. They're already yours and paid for in full. Take them, live them. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.